so guys uh, i'm going to start exactly uh, where roy left right the discussion was uh, you have uh, two founders but lack technical expertise and that's what roy said the moment you think of scale that's where you need to get that technical expertise the importance of data architecture is what i'm going to impress upon without getting too technical so quick uh, show of hands how many are engineers here okay quite a few in fact i would have liked uh, lesser because i wanted the rest of non engineers to be more tech oriented but nevertheless uh, the engineers should also find this relevant right so a uh, quick background about me uh, uh, like i was introduced i am currently a product architect at netcore i have been doing engineering after which uh, i got excited about uh, analytics machine learning so i started the data uh, science practice in my organization uh, as if the transition was not overwhelming enough i started leading product management also so i'm doing tech uh, data science and product management earlier i have experience with uh, msci which is a global index vendor as part of uh, the data management team so good 14 years of my career just went uh, looking at data analyzing it processing it at a scale and that's quick uh, uh, what i like to do apart from technology i love to travel that's uh, actually me not a stock photograph i took a ride from uh, mumbai to ladakh on my bullet and uh, like many speakers yesterday i believe somebody said uh, someone uh, reads like 146 books in a year uh, i do similar thing with travel and travel teaches you a lot of things like books right so it helps you improve your decision making right from the point where you decide to start right that's a decision where do you travel to uh, next is learn patience change perspective adjust to change and learn to let go right but the good thing is you uh, take off travel as a caption put anything up up there even if you put product management all the points are still relevant you uh, put architecture over there all the points are still relevant right so as a good architect you always want to let go you should let go right whatever you wrote yesterday doesn't work at 10x scale you should be happy to let it go and rewrite it so that it works at 10x scale so this is a quick uh, philosophy that we have been following for decade almost a decade at netcore and i don't claim to uh, be the owner of this framework it's out there in the internet but we have been doing it for a decade almost now without knowing that there is an official framework for product growth okay so what you see is three concentric circles every year when you decide to grow your product right you do something at your core you optimize your core so that uh, what you are good at you become even better you become more efficient at it while you are doing that right uh, what you are doing if you continue to do there is very limiting uh, limited that you can actually grow get more revenue out of so what do you do you get into adjacent areas so while your core is working for you it is sort of uh, getting you your paychecks you try to get into additional areas so that that eventually becomes your core after 3 or 2 years right so the core sort of expands you try to do more and more things eventually your product grows right and this is exactly how netcore has done it over a decade okay so we started with email marketing uh, next we got into is sms notifications and sms bulk messaging right while we were at it uh, the next area to get into is marketing automation while we were at marketing automation we started working on analytics and machine learning but the point to note here is while this was great product philosophy great to stay relevant in market and scale right can someone in imagine especially the engineers can you imagine the kind of impact it would have had on the technical architecture assuming this was one single product okay not five different products so let's say the product that was doing bulk sms campaigns uh, being asked to do email campaigns as well right so that's a steep challenge and it is only your technical uh, capabilities or the architecture that will either enable you or hinder you from doing this right so these are some bunch of technologies that we uh, use today in netcore but this is not all we do lot of custom implementations we write our own databases that are implementation of let's say sparse matrices 
uh, imagine doing something same on aerospike would have taken uh, GBs. So the scale at which we work today, we send about 11 billion communications per month. We process about 30 billion events per month, right? So uh, a lot of things have to be done custom. They have to be uh, rewritten on top of open source frameworks. And data architecture is key for our success. So quickly touching upon learnings, right? Why should non-technical guys be involved in data architecture? Why is it important for even product guys, co-founders, or uh, uh, say marketing executives to be part of data architecture? And by that, I don't mean that you go about poking nose into everything, but you have to be part of those discussions because those discussions are actually laying uh, your future roadmap, right? So data is core of product management. Any data-driven product is bound to be more successful than any uh, product that is not processing data, trying to make insights out of it, and leverage it for success. Uh, data creates a defensible mode for long-term success. Understand uh, the inevitable trade-offs that an engineer does, right? So, uh, so uh, Roy was talking about lazy engineers. Engineers are definitely a lazy breed. Given an objective, they would try to do it in least number of codes, uh, code and least number of lines, right? So how do you take care of the unstated future product requirements? So you have to be part of those discussions to ensure and give that sort of direction to the engineer that this is what I'm thinking six months down the line. This is what we might actually think of doing one year down the line. Can you think of those things right now? Make provisions for it so that in future, your data architecture does not become a constraint for the growth of the company. Right? And short-sightedness creates unnecessary crisis and delays in uh, product innovation as well as growth. So when do you actually uh, re-architect your system? Right? So when uh, it starts impacting your velocity, the moment uh, your time to market starts going up, you see new developers being non-productive, or uh, there are challenges with respect to releases, right? You're scared of doing a release because things might break down. You're scared to do that one big bang release or there are requirements where you do releases in isolation of components. That's the right time to take the decision of re-architecting your data uh, architecture. And you as product managers, marketers, or founders have to be part of that discussion to add that value to the architect who is re-architecting the system. So essentials of a good data architecture, basically it should be flexible, it should be scalable, uh, it should uh, work at uh, 10x the volumes, else it is not a good data architecture. Uh, it is difficult to get it uh, right the first time, but it is equally important to get it right. And by right, I don't mean perfect, okay? Uh, democratized data access, so the moment you get so let's say you are a startup who has just started. The product has started rolling, uh, like we saw in case of Bounce, right? They are currently doing 25,000 uh, rides, and uh, they are probably getting started with the data science team already, right? The data science guy actually needs data to create insights out of it and do uh, smart predictions. So is the data accessible to your data science guy? Is the data accessible to your marketing? Is the data accessible to your business? That's the quality of a good data architecture. Right, so uh, gone are those days where enterprises, IT controlled the access to data. Good data architecture should expose the data to everyone in a non-code way, okay, using tools, visualizations, and dashboards. It should be easy to use without specialized trainings, uh, ability to handle all data types. Like we saw, we were just doing email and SMSs, suddenly we pivoted to being an omni-channel marketing automation platform where web activity, app activity, all sort of clickstream data started coming and sitting right next to the structured data. Right? Without a good data architecture, such a pivot was simply impossible. Right? So what sort of approach uh, do one take? Right? Should you go about putting all your investments uh, on on-premise solution or should you simply look at the cloud like most startups do? Right? There is always a uh, phrase, there is no matter what problem you think of, there is an AWS service for it, right? And I believe there is a balance that is required for both of them. So at our scale, where we send about 11 billion emails or communications per month, right, the data outcharges 
would actually eat into our margins so significantly that we would not be profitable right so naturally we had to have a hybrid approach so like i said getting it right first time is equally important many a time startups say that i don't have the time to get it right i have to just get it out right now uh, as an mvp right but then the point to think is do you have the time to do it again redo it the cost of redoing it later is much expensive than doing it right the first time and like i said uh, by right i don't mean it perfect even if you get it 80% right that's good enough and that's the concept of mva right all of us are as product guys are a big fan of mvp mvp is a great way to actually uh, get feedback on your product learn from it iterate fast uh, instead of just spending hours and days and years looking at design board trying to get it perfect right so jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai so whatever works in the market you get the feedback honestly on it but often an mvp uh, depends on no architecture at all that's the crisis so an mvp should always have a minimum viable architecture along with it and the philosophy is same if it works the architecture should be extensible you could add components on top of it and have it scaled instead of doing redoing the entire thing right so when a mvp turns into a product you do incremental things on top of what is working and not redo the entire thing the same philosophy also applies to architecture right and a few more before i uh, quickly wrap up uh, so there is no one size fit all database today okay so uh, no one can actually claim to say all my requirements are either solved by an oracle or a mongodb there are purpose based uh, build databases for purpose built requirements and there has to be no shame in the replicating data okay so wherever i have to do a quick key value lookups i'll use a key value database wherever i have to do full text searches i'll use an elastic search and the data in both these places is incidentally same right but depending on what use case you want to solve you choose that database and there has to be no shame in the replicating the data eventual consistency so how many of you have heard this okay that's a tough one to digest what it means is data will eventually be consistent right while it is in flight it two nodes having the same data might not have same version and that's perfectly okay that's how you do actually distributed computing otherwise uh, it doesn't work right and if your engineer comes and tells you data will be eventually consistent trust trust him uh, that's the only way to scale and whatever i say right uh, so your mileage might vary okay and there is a interesting thing so you don't always just look, listen to talks or listen to uh, things and uh, go after that new shiny technology so like i had this uh, manager sometime back uh, who used to say ki dude you simply don't have a good architecture i said why uh, he said because you don't have a data warehouse i don't know where he heard that from uh, and eventually we built the data warehouse for whatever reasons and the necessity the same guy shows up and says dude you don't have an architecture still i said why because you don't have lambda architecture now okay and uh, obviously uh, we ended up doing that and the same guy i won't be surprised if he comes now and says you don't have an data architecture because now you don't have a data lake right so no matter what people say try to figure out what works for your use case go with it and uh, like i was talking about rearchitecting right so uh, i spoke about when it is the right time to rearchitect in fact the learning is you have to rearchitect 6 months prior before the shit hits the fan okay when things start breaking it is already too late to rearchitect anything so anticipate your scale problems start react architecting at least 6 months prior to that and last again the same thing no matter who you are get involved into the data architecture okay get involved into those technical discussions because you have a value to add to your architect thank you